Well, we learned a lot of stuff this year on honing. I would venture to say that everybody in here who's ever built an engine or a series of engines for a that were alike had a favorite block. Raise your hand if you had a favorite block. Well, they're going up. I'll raise both hands. Um, here's what we deciphered. That favorite block was the same as all the rest of them, at least it looked alike, but it was made at a different time, so it was different material. The way you or I were honing at that period of time or that place in time fit that block. Our, our process, all the stars lined up, everything worked right, and no matter what you did, that thing would run good and you could seal it up. And then there's these other blocks that they're just, I mean, run them, they're terrible, take them out, rehone them, put them back on, rehone them. Just never, ever very good. I can remember shoving them under benches, throwing them outside, all kinds of things. Here's the deal. You have to take your favorite block or you have to know the numbers off the profilometer of what the hone needs to look like to seal up the ring. And of course the piston and the oil and all that stuff's got to work too. But let's just assume it's, we're talking only about the block. The favorite block existed because our hone fit it. The stones we were using, the pressure we were using, the oil we were using. Well, once we know what the numbers are and we have that empirical data and we can measure what we're doing, just like with a mic or a dial bore gauge, we can now measure the surface finish of what we did. We have to take every block and regardless of how we have to achieve it, we have to get, we have to have those numbers. And if we achieve those same numbers that we did on our favorite block, that thing's going to seal up and be as good as that one. So, how do you figure out how to do it? Well, that's the old trial and error stuff. Um, we've come up with a process that's pretty simple and pretty easy to change from block to block. Um, and, and the key is the valleys. That's where the oil is. If you got too much valley, you need too much oil ring and it slows the engine down. If you don't have enough valley, the rings will hydroplane right over the oil and that's the ring seal problem. Everybody's so focused on the smoothness of the hone that when they take their sandpaper or they take their brush or they take their six or eight hundred grit stones and they smooth it out so it looks cool, they're taking the valley away at the same time. And if they measured it, they would know that. But without empirical data and without a dial bore gauge that will check the surface finish, which is called a profilometer, we're only guessing. So if you just use 400 grit stones all the time to finish the block and you find that this block's harder than this block because I can't get in, I, I can't get into the surface of the material without even checking the Brunel hardness, you, you know it's harder. And some blocks cut like butter. Well, you know they're softer. So you've got to back off on the pressure or you've got to get after the damn block. I mean, it's that simple. So the key is to find a finish or find somebody that knows what the numbers need to be, get the profilometer, and learn how to use it. And at that point, you will never have to take one off the dyno and put it back in the home and then try it again. And I can testify we had the same engine off and on the dyno and couldn't seal it up for five straight days. 
And once we figured that out, this block happened to be a compacted graphite Caterpillar GM block that was 270 Brunel, which is way higher than I ever had seen before, and I had no clue how to finish it. But once we learned how to finish it, that's our best engine. Not by a lot, but it went from the worst to the best. And it's all in honing. Then we get in to what are the rings and what are the ring grooves. With the new style rings that have very little vertical clearance, especially the 032s and the 027s that only have four or five tenths clearance, it's hard to tell you this, but it's true that anything you do to the top of the piston is going to ruin that ring groove, especially the intake pocket on any of these engines, because it's so deep and so close to the ring. And when you have four or five tenths clearance and the ring groove moves a tenth, that's a big deal. If you have a thousandths clearance, it's no, it doesn't matter. So you've got to be real, real careful with machining the pistons if you're going to use what makes the most power in this day and age, which is a millimeter ring, a thin wall, a two millimeter or thinner ring. 